Hey, we're back with Richard Parks for part two of the 40 year retrospective on uh, one of the greatest pipe majors of all time, his career since 1981 with Field Marshal Montgomery. Um, so Richard, proudest achievements. We talked about some of the highlights that you have uh, in your career, but what are some of your, your, what are you most proud of over your 40 years of leading Field Marshal Montgomery? Well, there was obviously a, a bad time when I when I, when I was ill. I had had the stroke in two thousand and four, um, and actually coming back and winning the Wurz in two thousand and four was that was a very um, emotional moment for me. I have to say, you know, through quite a bit, and to get there and to and to and to to get to winning the Wurz that that year was just um, special and uh, and very emotional for me, and so. That's that's one that that would stand out. Um, achieving the the MBE in two thousand and four as well was was just unbelievable to have that experience. Um, and then achieving the two doctorates in two thousand and eighteen, just things that I never thought would happen. You know, especially through playing the bagpipes. You know, and it's it's really great that that those things can happen, and it, it, it leaves leaves the door open for other people. Uh, to, to, to gain similar achievements and uh, I think those outside just just the competition success those three things would, would, would uh, stand out for me. Yeah those are amazing and uh, you know all three of those things are inspirational really for the piping and drumming world uh, you know the doctorates um, you know it, it really shows uh, in a bigger way that you know piping and drumming is, is you know serious and it's uh, you know it, it helps all of us. Um, you know, over the years, you know, I have to ask you, were there, did you ever have any doubts about leading field marshal? Did you ever feel like you, you might want to move on or, or uh, you know, anything like that? No, I mean, um, as I said in the first part, you know, I knew I had, I had a vision. I knew what I needed to do. Um, I knew that I needed to make the sound of the band better. I needed to play music that people would be attractive for people and I needed to improve the standard of player within the band. Uh, but how you do those things, you know, you, you need to be able to achieve all those things. If those are the things you need to do. You need to be able to actually achieve it. So I think, you know, I had an idea in my head, but basically learning from the people who were, who I played under and I thought, you know, okay, that's okay, but I would do it a different way. I would do this, I would do that. And then watching other pipe majors you know, the top pipe majors on the day of competition, watching what they did and sort of, I had the idea in my head how I would go about setting up the sound of the band. And, you know, that that proved everything that in my head when I when I did it, it worked. And, uh, you know, choose the best reads, the best reads that suit you and ensure that the, the players in the band are comfortable with the reads and all of that sort of stuff. And, you know, that worked. But the other thing about being a pipe major is it's, I always say that it's like, 20% talent and 80% man management. It's more down to how you handle people and people need to, it's like football managers as well. They have to want to play for you. So you have to always, you know, think about those things when you're handling the, the, the people within your band. And I think on the way up, that was very difficult because you had players in the band that were, you know, staple members of the band would always turn up in time, um, but maybe they didn't have the ability that, was going to get us the top grade one, you know, and I had to make those people actually understand, you know, that if we're going to get to the top, and I always, I always let them know that I, I mean, I always told them that I had a vision that the band would win the Worlds in grade one, and I don't think they really believed me at that time. Me, you know, for myself, it was always a vision, but I, I wasn't sure that it was ever going to happen. But I, I knew what I wanted to do. So, um, you know, you needed to, to ensure that you handle people right when you were actually asking the standard of the band, although some people aren't going to understand it, no matter what, what the situation is. But I think when I look back, all the people who, that, who played for me or played for the band in those initial stages, they didn't like it at the time that they were asked to stand aside. But they've been, they are so proud of what the band has done, you know, since that. And that they would always, you know, I'm still friendly with, with them all. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all part of the, the success of the band all part of that overall success of FM, but I never had any doubts. Um, I knew what I wanted to do. 
It was just whether I would be able to achieve it and get and get the, 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 all the jigsaw pieces in place that would that would fit. And it, it, all, it all worked out for me in the end. Yeah, we'll, we'll say that's uh, boy, has it ever worked out. Yeah, interesting that you know perseverance and the jigsaw pieces and patience and getting people to understand what the vision is and even you know when they don't fit into it, uh, you know they, they no hard feelings and they're they're yeah. they were still part of something. Really interesting, you know. And I have to ask, you know, we're at a time right now when you know hopefully we're over the uh, the hump when it comes to the the pandemic and you're getting back at it uh, very soon. How do you see the band emerging uh, from the pandemic situation right now? Um, well, I think it's going to be difficult for, for all bands to actually be comfortable getting together in close proximity indoors. And I think we've all got to come through a, a, you know, a process of getting back together outside, first of all, and then being able to, to, to be inside and any new um, measures we have to take, but hopefully it'll get to the stage where, you know, certainly here that the the that the, the pandemic will be at such a level that it'll be pretty much risk free, you know, and you won't have to worry about social distancing in a band practice situation. You know, hopefully that will be the case. You know, it's, if it's going to be that we have to do things differently, that's going to be, uh, you know, difficult for everybody. But hopefully it'll get at the stage where, okay, you know. D disappointing that we're not going to get a, a competition this year, but maybe we'll get to have some indoor practice. Well, hopefully we will get some outdoor practice this year. You know, that's you know I said last year that we would try and get an outdoor practice, but it didn't actually happen because of the way things went. But I think this year it should get to a level, certainly here in, in Northern Ireland and in Scotland, where we can have a, an actual practice ourselves outdoors. So that will help things. And hopefully we can get some indoor practice to, towards the... the the, the beginning of next year and hopefully be in a position where we don't have to worry too much about um, about transmission of the pandemic and, and are able to not social distance and, and do the things that we normally do in a practice. But I mean, it's going to be the whole thing about international players, that's going to be difficult as well, you know, with travel restrictions and everything. So it's, it's going to be a, a whole learning situation for a, a number of bands and hopefully we can um, get everybody back together and, and the, the band that we had in 2000 and the end of 2000 and whatever it was 2019 will, yeah. will come back you know and yeah. really be strong well it, everybody in the world I, I think I can safely speak for everybody who's missed uh, you know the sound of, of piping and live piping yeah. and uh, especially Field Marshall Montgomery and really look forward to hearing the band again. Why don't we uh, stop there in part two and uh, you know wrap it up in, in part three to come. Yeah.